this little demonstration is intended to illustrate some of the properties of a pinhole collimator used with a gamma camera. Instead of a source of gamma radiation for this demonstration, we're going to use two light sources, two light bulbs, as sources of visible light. And instead of the scintillation crystal of a gamma camera, we're going to use this translucent screen for detecting the light. So if I turn on my two sources here, we have got radiation emanating from them in all directions. And if we put the uh, detector represented by the uh, crystal here in front, we see that we don't get any image at all. We just get a general spread of light all over, as we might expect. In fact, if I turn one of the sources on and off, all that happens is that the overall picture gets dimmer and brighter. We don't resolve the two sources. We can't tell there are two separate sources there at all. That's because we don't have any collimator. But for this demonstration of a pinhole collimator, I have an oversized model consisting of this cone of opaque material with a hole at the front representing the pinhole. This is um, about 10 times life size. A real pinhole is a few millimeters in diameter. This one's a couple of centimeters in diameter. But if we put our pinhole collimator in front of the screen representing the detector, and put the whole thing in front of our two sources, you see that we do, in fact, now get an image. You can see two separate parts to the image representing our two sources. And if I turn the upper source on and off, you'll see it's the lower image that flashes on and off, demonstrating that this is, in fact, an inverted image, as we expect from a pinhole collimator. The other thing we can see um, is the magnification, the size of the image. If we go back and look at the sources for a moment, the two sources are this distance apart, and if we put the uh, collimator there and look at the image, we'll see that the image is about the same distance apart here. But if I move the pinhole collimator closer to the detector, the images get further and further apart. We get a magnification. Um, the image is larger than the object. Conversely, if we come further away, I'm moving the source away from the gamma camera detector now, you see that the two images get closer and closer together. Now we have a minified image. So the magnification changes with distance. When it's a long way away, you get a small image. At a certain distance, you get a life-size image. And when you're closer, you get a magnified image. But if we go too close, the magnification becomes so great that, in fact, it falls off the edge of the detector. Um, that is uh, obviously not desirable. The other thing we can do is look at the resolution, the ability to separate the images. When we're fairly close, we can clearly see that there are two separate images there from our two separate sources. But as we come further away, the images get smaller but also merge into each other and become more blurred so that actually we can now no longer distinguish two separate images. It looks just like one large image. This is poor resolution. We can't separate the sources. When we get close, we get better resolution. We are able to separate the sources much more easily. So getting close gives us good resolution. The other thing I can illustrate with this is the sensitivity. For a gamma camera, that is how many gamma rays you get for each megavector of activity, here, it will be represented how much light we get for each um, uh, source. So here, I've just turned off one of the sources to make it easy. And what we're going to do is watch how the brightness of this source changes, the brightness of the image changes, the source is not changing, but the brightness of the image changes as we get further away. Here, we've got a reasonably bright image. And as we get further away, you can see that it gets dimmer and dimmer, as you might expect. So here, the sensitivity is falling. Uh, if it was for a gamma camera, we'd get fewer gamma rays detected. So a long way away gives us poor sensitivity. And as we get closer, the sensitivity gets better and better and better. The magnification also gets better. And indeed, when we are close, we get good resolution. And as we come further away, the resolution gets worse. The ability to dis distinguish the images gets worse and the sensitivity, the brightness of the image, also gets worse. So those are the properties of a pinhole collimator.